Staff Sergeant Robert Graham served as a Mac V SOG commando during the Vietnam War. And if you're unfamiliar with Mac V SOG, they were a highly classified special operations unit during the Vietnam War. They were composed primarily of Green Berets, Navy SEALs, recon marines, and local fighters and mercenaries. They specialized in strategic reconnaissance, direct action, and unconventional warfare operations. They went where U.S. troops weren't supposed to be and did things U.S. troops weren't supposed to do. And as you can imagine, the types of missions these SOG operators would go on required quite a bit of stealth. They would go far behind enemy lines where there were thousands upon thousands of enemy troops in the area with normally only six to ten men in their unit. So getting caught was absolutely not an option for them. So they would use suppressors on their weapons, they would use their knives, they would even take crossbows occasionally to try and just be as quiet as they possibly could. But they found that most of these weapons just weren't that effective. The crossbows they had at the time were just not working well. Obviously, a knife was very situational. You had to be painfully close to the enemy. And suppressors, unfortunately, are just not as quiet as they make them appear to be in the movies. But Staff Sergeant Robert Graham was an avid bow hunter from Canada. And he decided to write a letter to a friend back home requesting that he mail him his 55 pound traditional bow with razor edged broadhead arrows to Vietnam to give him and his team another quieter option for taking care of enemy forces. And while this does initially kind of sound like a cool tactical advantage against the enemy, when Robert Graham was interviewed much later on after the war, uh, his attitude towards it was less so about the tactical advantage of bringing a bow into war and more so about how sick it would be if he actually managed to take someone out with a bow and arrow. He spent quite a bit of time practicing with it back at base in between missions, shooting at milk jugs and cardboard boxes, trying to get as good as he could with his bow. And then finally, his team was handed the perfect mission to try out this bow. They were going for a POW snatch mission, which... Initially to me, prisoner of war snatch mission, that sounds to me like they're going in to rescue an American soldier that has been captured by the enemy. But because Mac V. Sog was absolutely nuts, that is not at all what this mission was about. It was actually about attempting to capture a live enemy soldier for interrogations. Mac V. Sog was very good at gathering intels. One of their main missions was to sneak into enemy bases and steal whatever intel they could from the enemy to try and learn about their plans and troop movements and just any useful information they could get. But unfortunately, a lot of the intel they gathered just wasn't useful to them because they couldn't really understand it. A lot of this was encrypted or in other languages. Just a lot of it was very hard for them to understand. So they quickly learned that they needed to capture some enemy soldiers so that they could force them to tell them what the heck this stuff meant. So the objective of this mission was to sneak into an enemy controlled area and hopefully find an enemy soldier patrolling the area by himself knock him out, and drag him back to base without being spotted. And these SOG operators were incredibly creative in how they went about knocking out and capturing these enemy soldiers. One SOG unit even went as far as to thoroughly test and figure out the exact amount of C4 needed to knock out an enemy soldier without killing him. And when I say they tested it, I mean they tested it on themselves, knocking themselves out numerous times to make sure that they figured out the just the right amount of C4 needed to knock someone out without blowing them apart. Which is insane. They literally used C4 explosives on themselves to figure out the right amount to knock someone unconscious without killing them. So they would usually take that C4 and place it on a road or a path where they knew enemy patrols would normally travel through there, and then they would hide in the bushes with a remote detonator and wait for a group of enemies to walk over the C4. They would then detonate it, 
knocking out all of the enemy soldiers and then killing all of them except for the one they wanted to capture, dragging that one all the way back to base. But unfortunately, C4 is very, very loud, and there were way too many enemies in the area Robert Graham's unit would be operating in for them to use such a loud method to knock out the enemy soldier. So they were going to have to figure something else out. So Robert decided to grab his bow and arrows and head out on the mission in the hopes of being able to take out a few enemy soldiers quietly, leaving just the one they wanted to capture alive. So Graham's five-man team inserted into the area and snuck around in the jungle until they found an ideal ambush site to surprise their targets. However, before they could get set up, an enemy NVA patrol stumbled onto their position and immediately gunfire erupted. So now being fully compromised, the MACV SOG team had no choice but to make a mad dash back to the landing zone where they would be picked up by their helicopters. So now the SOG team is sprinting through the jungle with a ton of enemy soldiers chasing them down. They're chucking hand grenades over their shoulders in hopes of slowing down the enemy, and the team's radio man is trying to get a hold of the helicopters to come pick them up as quickly as possible. Thankfully, the Americans reach a bomb crater near the landing zone and are able to take cover but are quickly pinned down by the enemy AK-47 fire. But the team holds their ground, awaiting the arrival of their air support. But their air support was not expecting to be picking the team up this quickly after dropping them off, so it was taking them longer than expected to get back on site. So just as the team was running low on ammunition, Graham decided to grab his bow and arrow and go to work. He peeked his head out above the crater and let out a loud war cry towards the enemy's position and then began to fire arrows in their direction. He managed to hit at least a few enemy soldiers with arrows and then suddenly the enemy soldiers just stopped shooting and began to flee the area. And moments later, the Green Hornet Huey helicopter swooped in and picked up the commandos, taking them back to base. I have no idea why the enemy patrol decided to flee the area. At that point, the entire team was almost completely out of ammo, and Graham and his bow and arrow were the only ones putting down fire on the enemy's position. So rather they could hear the helicopters coming and that's why they decided to flee the area, or maybe they just didn't want to deal with a crazy Canadian with a bow and arrow, I'm honestly not sure. But miraculously, they fleed the area and the entire commando team survived. Years after the war, Graham was recorded in an interview saying that he's sure somewhere right now there's a bunch of NVA veterans in a bar sharing a story about the time they fought against a crazy American commando with a bow and arrow. And he's sure absolutely no one in that bar believes them for a second. This has got to be one of my favorite Mac V SOG stories. I feel like I say that about every SOG story that I share here on the channel, but this one, I just love it so much. It's not as intense or as crazy as some of the other SOG stories out there, but it's just so epic. The fact that he took a bow and arrow into a war on a super classified special operations mission just blows my mind. And it makes it 10 times better that it wasn't necessarily so much about the tactical advantage that they'd have taking a bow and arrow into war <laughs> as much as it was just that they thought it would be awesome if they managed to kill someone with it. Just amazing. These guys were absolutely nuts. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Thank you so much for checking the video out. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. But if you don't enjoy the video for any reason, Make sure you guys hit that dislike button and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to improve my future videos. And also, let me know down in the comment section of any other stories I've not covered here that you guys would like for me to share. But anyway, I hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys later.